Dr. Lee is a valuable asset. Excuse me, Proctor Ingram. Comes to I've us. checked and rechecked everything. You I think the signal interceptor is ready to go. Are you? I've checked and rechecked everything. I think the signal interceptor is ready to go. Are you? Let's do this. All right. Head up onto the platform, and we'll see if I can find a signal to lock onto. Pull yourself together and get up onto that platform. Let's see. Relays dialed in. Beam emitters warmed up. Everything looks green. Let me start scanning for the signal. Cross your fingers. I'm inputting the code now. Wow, there's a heck of a lot of interference and ghosting. It's gonna take a minute or two to lock in. By the way, this little trip you're taking is a heck of an opportunity to find out as much as we can about the Institute and what they're up to. I put a clever little program on this holotape that'll scan their network and download anything it finds. If you place it in any terminal down there, it'll do the rest. Bring it back to me and I'll see if I can make sense of whatever it found. Well, well, looks like we have a winner. RF wave capture complete. Ramping the emitter. 60%, 80%. Emitter spiking, but steady. All that's left is to throw the transmit switch. Transmitting in three, two, one. Stay safe, soldier. I wondered if you might make it here. You're quite resourceful. Jammed. I am known as Father. The Institute is under my guidance. I know why you're here. I'd like to discuss things with you face to face. Please, step into the elevator. I can only imagine what you've heard, what you think of us. I'd like to show you that you may have the wrong impression. Welcome to the Institute. This is the reality of the Institute. This place, these people, the work we do. For over a hundred years, we've dedicated ourselves to humanity's survival. Decades of research, countless experiments and trials, a shared vision of how science can help shape the future. It has never been easy. And our actions are often misinterpreted by those above ground. Someday, perhaps, we can show them what we've accomplished. But for now, we must remain underground. There's too much at stake here to risk it all. As you've seen, things above are... unstable. I'd like to talk to you about what we can do for everyone. But that can wait. You are here for a specific... very personal reason. You are here for your son. That's fun. Sean. Huh? I guess maybe yes, they're, uh, I'm Sean. gonna take over. I guess uh, that's an improvement, right? Brotherhood instead of Sean. You know, it's... Is that really you? That, uh, Who are you? That was a joke. By the way, I'm totally kidding. <laughs> Didn't really mean it. And if the Brotherhood is listening. Sean. Sure. It's me. Very nice. I'm. Please don't kill me. 
I'm your dad. Father, what's going on? What's happening? Yes, it's me, your dad. I'm here, Sean. What's going on? Father? Father! It'll be okay, Sean. I'm here now. I don't know you. Go away. Father! Father, help me! There's someone here! Help me! Who is Father? Where is he? Father? Father, help me! He's trying to take me! Father? Father, help me! Sean. S923, recall code Cirrus. Fascinating, but disappointing. The child's responses were not at all what I anticipated. He's a prototype, you understand. We're only just now beginning to explore the effects of extreme emotional stimuli. Please try and keep an open mind. I recognize that you are emotional, and that your journey here has been fraught with challenges. Let's start anew. I am... Give me Sean, the real Sean, right now! I know, I know. You've gone to such lengths to find him. I'll make this very simple. Where is my son? He's here, in the Institute. Closer than you think. But I need you to realize that this situation is far more complicated than you could have imagined. You have traveled very far, and suffered a great deal to find your son. Well, your tenacity and dedication have been rewarded. It's good to finally meet you. After all this time, it's me. I am Sean. I am... your son. How is that even possible? I know this is a lot to take in. In the vault, you had no concept of the passage of time. You were released from your pod and went searching for the son you'd lost. But then you learned that your son was no longer an infant, but a ten-year-old boy. You believed that ten years had passed. Is it really so hard to accept that it was not ten? But 60 years. That is the reality. And here I am. Raised by the Institute. And now its leader. They stole you. Kidnapped you. Wasn't right. Right, wrong, irrelevant. It was necessary. The Institute believed humanity's future depended on it. At that time, the year 2227, the Institute had made great strides in synth production. But it was never enough. Scientific curiosity and the goal of perfection drove them ever onward. What they wanted was the perfect machine. So they followed the best example thus far. The human being. Walking, talking, fully articulate, capable of anything. So the weird science experiments needed specimens. That's why they took you. In a manner of speaking, yes. The Institute endeavored to create synthetic organics. The most logical starting point, of course, was human DNA. Plenty of that was available, of course. But it had all become corrupted. In this wasteland, radiation affected everyone. Even in their attempts to shield themselves from the world above, members of the Institute had been exposed. Another source was necessary. But then the Institute found me, after discovering records from Vault 111. An infant, frozen in time, protected from the radiation-induced mutations that had crept into every other human cell in the Commonwealth. I was exactly what they needed. 
And so it was my DNA that became the basis of the synthetic organics used to create every human-like synth you see today. I am their father. Through science, we are family. The synths, me, and you. Sean. It's really you. It really is. I know you must have questions. Please. Anything I can do to help you understand. Your mother. She never got to see you grow up? Yes. What happened to her was... I've gone over the records of the incident, of course. It seems her death was an unfortunate bit of collateral damage. Collateral damage? Is that all she was to you? I forget that it's been such a short time for you. I don't have any direct memories. And I've had my entire life to cope with a loss. Has it always been easy? Of course not. But I've done my best to move on and live my life. For many years, I never questioned who my parents were. I accepted my situation, and that was that. With old age comes regret, and asking what if more often. But what matters now is that you and I have a chance to begin again. What else can I say? to ease your mind. Kellogg. He worked for you? Kellogg. He was an institute asset long before I arrived here. It wasn't until I became director that I learned of all the things he'd done. What kind of man he was. You knew the man was a psychopath, but you used him anyway? Would you have preferred that I turned him loose on the Commonwealth? At least keeping him on a short leash kept the collateral damage to a minimum. The Institute took advantage of Kellogg's vicious nature. I will freely admit that. Institute technology prolonged his life and his usefulness far beyond any normal human lifespan. He never failed the Institute. But his cruelty became more apparent with every completed objective. I won't lie. It's no coincidence your path crossed his. It seemed a fitting way to allow you... us... to have some amount of revenge. What else can I say to ease your mind? So you're in charge of the Institute? I am the acting director, yes. I spent decades working to reach this point. It's a responsibility I take Tommy very Rose seriously. Uh, <laughs> the Institute. Rocket it's important. <laughs> it really is humanity's best hope for the future, no matter what those above ground might think of us. They're scared of you, Sean. Scared of the Institute. People are always frightened by what they don't understand. Ultimately, the Commonwealth has nothing to fear from us. Whatever you've seen or heard, I know I can convince you of that. Just give me time. I know there's more for us to discuss. But the Institute is on the verge of some important breakthroughs. Your presence would be appreciated as we approach them. I've been a part of something amazing here. I've helped to build a life for myself and the people of the Institute. And now, after all these years, you have an opportunity to help with that. Doesn't that intrigue you? Isn't that what you want? You want me to stay here? In the Institute? Yes. That is what I propose. Is it so hard to imagine? The Institute can provide a better life than anything above ground. You've been in the Commonwealth. You've seen what it's like. I assure you that you are better off with us. I don't know what to do. 
I realize that. It's why I'm trying to help you. I hope that you can see that rationally. The Institute is the only thing left in the world that is worth being part of. I simply ask that you give the Institute, me, a chance. A chance to show you what I've been telling you. We really do have humanity's best interests at heart. Will you take that chance? Are you sure you want this? Yes, I am. It would benefit us both to work together. <sighs> I just don't know. Just give it time. Give the Institute a chance. The Institute is now your home as much as it is mine. Please take some time, get to know it. Meet the people you'll be working with. You'll want to introduce yourself to the Division Heads. Dr. Fillmore in Facilities. Dr. Ao in SRB. Dr. Holdren in Bioscience. And finally, Dr. Lee in Advanced Systems. They've all been notified of your arrival, of course. Meet them, and then we'll discuss what comes next. This is Diamond City Radio, and I'm, uh, you know, this is me, Travis. Anyway, next I'm gonna play some Cole Porter. The song is, uh, the song is called Anything Goes. There's a clean floor. Are your visual receptors malfunctioning? Can you not see the grime and dust? Excuse me, Doctor. You know what happens when people get robots to do all their work? They get fat and lazy, that's what. Real I people reward, doing sir. real thinking and real work. That's the future I want. Operating at full capacity. You're clearly defective, and I intend to report this. Perhaps I can do this. Welcome to the Institute, sir. Power Excuse armor me. is Carry steady on, enough, sir. but it limits your mobility. Remember to keep unnecessary power consumption to a, a clean minimum. and healthy work environment Don't is essential to maximum productivity. It's an honor to have you here, sir. Almost done. Just Doctor, need to tighten they up this kidding. primary drive they really are here. Well, all right. I'm Allie. Allie Fillmore. You can think of me as the Institute's chief engineer. When Father told us about you, I could hardly believe it. You've been through so much, I think most people would have just given up. If you don't mind my asking, what was it that kept you going all that time?
I wanted to kill the son of a bitch who murdered my wife. Kellogg always was a cold bastard. If you ask me, we're better off without him. Now, I'll give you a quick rundown of the facility's division, and then I'll answer any questions you might have afterward. As you might guess, we keep the Institute's mechanical and electrical systems running smoothly. We maintain and upgrade all of the systems that make it possible to live and work in a place like this. There's a lot of machinery behind these walls that recycles the air and water and provides power to the laboratories and quarters. The work we do might not be as exciting as some of the other departments, but it's at least as important. So, now that you're here and you've spoken to Father, does that mean you're on board? On board with what? The Institute, of course. Sean implied you operated on a level, if not equal, and at least similar to the rest of us. Curious. If there's anything else you'd like to know about the facilities division, I'm happy to discuss it. I'd like to know about the people in your division. Of course. Dr. Lawrence Higgs is our mechanical engineer. He oversees the major life support and security systems. Power distribution is Dr. Evan Watson's area of expertise, and Dr. Newton Oberly is in charge of food and housing. He coordinates with bioscience to ensure that our meals are balanced for optimal nutrition. We also make use of a number of synth units for low priority maintenance and labor. That's the third primary drive breakdown this month. As far as I'm concerned, the phase out on these older models can't come soon enough. Oh, I don't know. Most of them have lasted long past their projected lifespans. If you ask me... I must make you proud to see all that Father has done. All that he has built. I thought all the surface people look like monsters, but you seem pretty normal. Is it true, food supplement seventy-seven has been discontinued. That is correct. That was my favorite one. You know the protocol, sir. Authorized personnel only. So Dr. Ayo thinks he can hide in his office. Scanning unknown identity. Well, you can tell him that I intend to speak to Father about these unannounced. I'll pass along your message, Doctor. See that you do. I am seriously thinking of heading over to robotics to knock some heads together. What now? They're dragging their feet on the target. Always package be vigilant. I asked for. We have Maybe I should take enemies. some courses with me. You know, send a message. You're here. Glad you made Please it. Please don't. There's enough friction as it is between ah, us so and pretty much all the other departments. Here you are. Justin Ayo, Acting Director of the Synth Retention Bureau. I'll be upfront with you. We're going to be keeping a close eye on you for the near future. Despite your relation to Father, you're a bit of an unknown quantity. I'm sure you understand. There won't be any... issues, will there? Why? Don't you trust me? I'll be honest. You're an outsider. The first outsider to be allowed access to the Institute in quite a long time, in fact. There's little precedent for this situation, so it's only natural to take extra precautions, hmm? It's nothing personal, I assure you. Now, Father has asked that I provide you with a brief overview of the Synth Retention Bureau. Our primary responsibility is the recovery of escaped synths that are hiding among the human population on the surface. I'm sure it's best for everyone if the synths remain here. Certainly. We can't allow sophisticated Institute technology to fall into the wrong hands. The results could be disastrous. Our main instrument is the Courser, a third-generation synth assigned to operate on the surface. Coursers hunt down and reclaim synths that have escaped the Institute. They are highly self-sufficient, trained in combat, infiltration, and tracking. In a word, our Coursers are relentless. But I gather you know all this, since you've encountered Ready. In fact, I'd very much like to know how you defeated it. I'm no stranger to combat. Even so, a courser should be more than a match for any single combatant. I suppose I'll have to ask robotics to perform detailed diagnostics on the entire production run. As if we don't have enough problems. Now, unless you need something else, I'll get back to work.
I'd like to know more. Fine. Once we then begin in those old two. Dr. Ayo. What do you want? And please make it quick. Well, there's this article in uh, the newspaper. Public occurrences. Report oh, yeah. anything suspicious to the SRP. Oh, it's, it's, it's something. I mean, I, uh, I'm not saying anyone is a sin. You know, I'm not. I'm not saying it's it, it, scanning uh, correct. Subject identified. Oh. says here there's uh, nothing to worry about that it's you know safe and all everybody Dr. Holdren's synth gorilla project is showing promising results Weird. you wouldn't happen to have a spare pole anyway, laser on you uh, would you well, it's something to think about I guess now I'll uh, uh, well I guess I'll play something I try not to think too much about it. We have more. Hi, Doc. There's still a okay. couple. And it's so good suffer. to have you here. Dr. We Clayton Holdren, that it's head of the Bioscience Division. After all, I can't how wait can for we you to see the work we're doing. Mankind it's truly we amazing. Hold on to our own humanity. I look forward to learning more about it. In that case, let me give you a brief overview of what we do here. As the name implies, the Bioscience Division specializes in fields of study such as botany, genetics and medicine. Our most important directive is to ensure the health and well-being of everyone in the Institute. To that end, we cultivate highly specialized breeds of flora for use in food and medicine. We've even started to explore the idea of synthetic animal life. You probably saw the gorillas. They're really just a pet project at this point, but the potential is exciting nonetheless. The gorillas are synths too? They are indeed. Judging by your reaction, we've done a good job making them seem lifelike. The initiative is still in its early stages, but the prospects are very exciting. I'm sure I've taken up enough of your time as it is, but I have to ask, have you decided whether you'll join us? I'm not sure. Right now, I'm just trying to keep an open mind. It's a big decision, I know, but it's also a rare and important opportunity. No need to rush to judgment. In any case, I imagine you'll want to continue looking around. Or, if you prefer, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. I'm good for now. Thanks. Take care, then. She's been at it for over two hours. What is she even testing? Nothing. At this point, she's just doing it for fun. Dr. Lee. Oh, it's you. You're not authorized to be here. Actually, I was looking for you. Me? Why? Well, that was productive. I've been sent by the Brotherhood of Steel to find you. You don't beat around the bush, I'll give you that. I knew it was just a matter of time before your people would track me down. I've been looking over my shoulder for almost a decade, waiting for them to send someone like you to kill me. No, I just want to talk. Fine. Hmm. Since Father trusts you, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. 
I might not agree with everything he says, but I know he'd never allow harm to come my way. Say what you came here to say, and then leave me alone. Are you happy here? You'd think being surrounded by cutting-edge laboratory equipment and some of the greatest minds the world's ever known would be enough. Only problem is the lack of transparency. I don't think we get the full story on everything that occurs down here. What does that have to do with why we're talking? The Brotherhood needs your help, Doctor. Needs my help? Why? They seem to have everything under control when I left. The Brotherhood valued your presence, and we'd like you to come back. Well, how sweet of them. Tell me something. Why would I possibly want to come crawling back to the Brotherhood? What reason would I have to throw away everything I've accomplished here? Father trusts me, and so should you. He trusts you because you're family. I'm not. I can't just take your word for it. I need more than that. The Brotherhood has always been straight with you. I am getting a bit tired of all the secrets around here. Sometimes I feel like Father isn't being straight with me. Like there are things I'm not supposed to know about. I don't like that. But still, how can I turn my back on all of this? Your work could be instrumental in freeing the Commonwealth. <sighs> you really know how to push my buttons, don't you? You know, I never understood why the Institute was so damn selfish. All those innocent people up there... dying. And here I am, surrounded by technology that could make their lives better. Yet we hide down here and insulate ourselves from everything and everyone. It's not right. It's not right. I'll make my way back to the Brotherhood. But I'm going to have to do it on my own. I can't take any chances being seen with you. Tell whoever sent you that they've just regained the services of Dr. Madison Lee. Now, for the sake of keeping up appearances, let me see that pit boy of yours. I've been told to install a coarser chip in it for you. Father's orders. You're to be given full access, with the ability to relay in and out of the Institute at will. A coarser chip? What's it do? The same thing it does for our coursers. Creates a link to the relay that allows them, and now you, to get in and out at will. In case the significance is lost on you, you'll be the only one here with that kind of access. If nothing else, it should demonstrate the amount of trust Father has placed in you. Speaking of, I trust our discussion will remain between the two of us. Now, I need to get back to work, and I'm sure you have other things to do. That was the ink spots with It's All Over But the Crime. 
because that part I never, well, it never really stops. I mean, the song ended ironically, but the crying mentioned in the song never stops. So, uh, there's this thing I heard about. Uh, I'm not even really sure what to say. There, there are stories about, well, it's some big contraption that's being built out there in the Commonwealth. No one that's mentioned it, uh, they don't know what it does. Not for sure. This next part, well, I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just people talking, you know? It doesn't, doesn't make it true. Not necessarily. But it's been said, well, it has something to do with the Institute. Try to blow it up, or make it disappear, or something. There aren't, there aren't really any details. If, uh, if I were you, and I saw this thing, well, <laughs> you better believe that, you know, I'd, I'd run the other way. Orange Colored Sky by Nat King Cole. You love this one, right? It's a, a real classic. Sure.
Danny Kay there singing. Uh, that was Civilization. So um, <clears throat> this radio station here, we we don't really make any caps, and uh, there are uh, well, some people help me stay in the air. People like uh, like this. Fallon's Basement, providing top-of-the-line fashion to Diamond City for over ten generations. Was I uh, the only one surprised that Skeeter Davis is, you know, a woman? It's just, yeah, I didn't really sound like a woman's name. Hey, who are you writing that poem for? Skeeter!
positive guy that's being Crosby. You're listening to, uh, uh, Diamond City Radio. If, if you're listening at all, I mean. Benny Hutton is on now. Singing about a man? Right? Oh, that's so stupid! That's Patty Hutton. That's what this one is. When are you going to tell me about this mysterious Phase 3? You know I can't talk about that. Do we really need all these coursers roaming the hall? 